Hey, 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 it's your boy Debbie Day up in the building. I got a very special guest, Mr. Entrepreneur, CEO, the new P. Diddy. Give it up for Mr. Kid Clutch Productions, aka Tyler. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, Daniel. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always good to have you on here, brother. So, let's get into it. So, we got a very special topic. It's going to be about Joe Biden and the Democrat support card. You got holding these politicians accountable. And we got the Black News Channel being sold to Byron Allen. Let's get into it, man. So, Tyler, Joe Biden has been president for a good year now. Two years now, if you count the fact that he was voted in 2020 election. And how has he been doing as president, in your opinion? I don't think he's been doing very well. I, I think with Joe Biden is, I think in Joe, I think the last few weeks he's been doing well with certain things, but I think as a, as of a whole, he hasn't done great as president. I think what all he did was stop being controversial like Donald Trump, but really as far as his performance, he hasn't been doing anything, doing enough, I'll say. Because I think, I think him and the Democrat Party are pandering to the quote-unquote um, swing voter that they think probably went and voted for Trump. They think that they can win them back. And I feel like that's not really reality. And I think the contrast between the Democrat Party and the Republican Party is the Republican Party, they go hard for their people when it comes to doing some things. I think the Democrat Party, they don't, they always, they say enough to get elected. And then once they get elected, they change their whole tune. And they ch when it comes to governing, they don't govern how they um, campaign. Especially in a presidential election. And I think what's going on with the Democrat Party is that they're trying to pull a fast one over all of our eyes. And the thing right now is black people, white people, Hispanics, Asian, indigenous, everybody is watching them. And they're like, no, you can't, you, you're full of shit. You can't fool us with this. And I think with the Democrat Party, it's kind of making the mags. It's like, we, we got all this stuff passed and stuff. How come we got Joe Biden's approval rating is not going up? How come Democrats, people are not, they're not doing well in the polls for people to go vote? The reason why is because you're not, you're ignoring everybody. And it's like, people don't seem to understand, like, in a democracy, if you have a democracy, you're supposed to listen to the people. The only way it works is if the people obey and the people buy into what you're selling. It's just like being, now I'm, I'm in market. So I know this very well. It's just like me. I have to, if I want you to buy a product from me, I have to get you to buy what I'm selling. If you, if I can't sell the product to you, I'm in a bad shape. Because let's say, um, I, I have a product. It can be a good product and all this, but if I, I can't convince you to buy it and I can't convince you that you need it, then I'm not doing my job. But I've seen Donald Trump, he packaged shit and he sold it like it was a um, pile of treasure. And his people and even other people have bought what he was selling. It's because he's good at slogans, he's good at campaigning. And even though he lies a lot, he tells the truth in certain areas. The Democrats, they're scared of being honest about stuff that they need to be honest about when they're governing instead of just doing stuff. Perfect example, I've seen Joe Biden over the last probably year, I'll say, um, I, let's, I'll just say year. Every time something goes on that's major, especially in the black community, that Joe Biden needs to um, pay attention to, it's like he tries to ignore it. And it's not just Biden, too. It's the Democrat Party as a whole. They try to ignore it and sweep it under the rug, act like nothing happened, act like nothing's going on. And then when people are going on TV and people are putting pressure on them, 
saying the Democrats ain't doing this and that, or they're not doing enough, Joe Biden seems to start acting on stuff. And it's like, why does it take people having to do that instead of you just doing your job? Because it's like, well, other groups, they don't have to do that. You just go and do it. And I, me personally, I think the Democrat Party has been catering to the white people and white supremacists in the LGBT community. Mm. And I give, for that, I give Joe Biden an F for his report card with black people. Now, I definitely agree with your sentiments because, and I've analyzed his performance as well. And let me tell you, it's not very good. I haven't seen him do the thing with the whole Buffalo shooting. There was, let me tell you what happened a couple months ago. Buffalo shooting happened. The 10 black people were, were killed. And he basically went on there and said, oh, our thoughts and prayers and everything else. But when it came to abortion or these other groups' rights or these other groups' issues, he goes hard and he goes full force. And I'm like, well, where is that same energy when it comes to black folks? He gives black people uh, Juneteenth, which really it wasn't even people, black, black people have been celebrating that for centuries. And he said he was going to do criminal justice reform. He hasn't done shit with criminal justice reform. Excuse my language, but that's the truth. And instead of reform, he's giving money to the police. And also, people don't want to talk about this, about the Miranda rights. There was a case of police brutality where it was about this black dude, and it was a, a Latino cop. And basically, there was a case of the Miranda rights you know, being read, and the uh, cop didn't read the Miranda rights. Joe Biden's attorney general basically made it had him basically say that, oh, uh, we're not going to have them read the Miranda rights. I'm like, that's a problem because now you can't even hold these police officers, you can't hold uh, them accountable and they don't have to read the Miranda rights. That's a problem. Joe Biden's also just giving money to the police and giving more budget for the police. That's a problem too. He gave a law stating that he was going to quote unquote deal with police brutality, but it's a federal law. It's not a state and local because most of these police brutality killings that I see are state and local. That's a problem. That and this whole Juneteenth and the whole anti-lynching bill, nobody does lynchings anymore. So, I give him an F when it comes to dealing with black people. But when it comes to these other groups, the LGBTQ community and everything else, dealing with Ukraine and dealing with these other issues, I'll give him a, a A or B because he goes full force and he says, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I feel like he's been catering to those type of groups of people when it comes to black folks. He wants to ignore it and not really do anything or say anything. And that's the problem. And then he he campaigned like he had black folks back. Like he's going to do all this stuff. Like criminal justice reform and George Floyd bill and the anti-lynching bill. But he hasn't. He just given us Juneteenth which is nothing more than celebration and tokenism. And he put Katanji Brown Jackson on the Supreme Court, which kudos to her, but ultimately the president picks a Supreme Court justice. So this has always been known. This is what the, pre the, uh, the past presidents always do. They give basically um, what Joe Biden's basically done when it comes to black folks is give a bunch of symbolism and nothing tangibles, no tangibles, meaning policy specifically for black folks. All he's given is basically Juneteenth which is basically a celebration, not even just for black folks, but for these corporations to get money and to get a holiday off. That's all it, all it really is. And so for that, I give him an F when it comes to black folks. And his performance is not good. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't change it around, then everything, then when the midterms come up and it's time for him to get reelected a second time, that's a, um, basically he needs to get himself together because his midterms coming up. Every four years, he has to get elected. So, if he doesn't get his stuff together within the next two years, it's not going to look good. That's my thoughts on Joe Biden and everything. And I agree, I agree with you on that, but I got a few things I want to push back on. Uh, number one is when you said that he um, had the 
hasn't passed the um, police reform yet. The con- Congress hasn't got it passed in the Senate. It's passed in the House twice, once before Biden got in office and the second time when Biden got in office. And he signed an executive order that was, it was, it was a few things from um, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act in that executive order that he signed. But as you said, it's, it deals with it federally. And number two, he can't, when it comes to that, he cannot do anything on state and local. Your, the governors and mayors got to do that. And also, I want to say there have been a few states that have did police reform because of that. So I'll say that. And they've been um, no not warrants, chokeholds, and certain police reform um, relics. And another thing I want to get on is the mention what you said about the lynching bill. Yes, there are people being lynched, especially in um, Mississippi. So that still does go on in this country. And um, you said he didn't pass that. That didn't get passed. It did. That passed, I think, um, I think with a majority. I think I think you had some Republicans and actually Democrats and Republicans voted on that. So that's been passed. But as far as the abortion, too, I don't think he's done enough on that. So that's something else I wanted to push back on. Okay. Okay. I understand I that. Think, I don't really think the abortion part is his fault. That's more on Democrats because they could have got that done later. But, okay, I want to piggyback off of what you said now. I'll finish with what mm. I said. Yeah. And also, I uh, pulled up this article this was on the joe biden basically huge went to supreme court win overruling miranda warnings so basically this is an article from above the law and basically it's talking about a police brutality case where it was the case where it talks about basically the the, uh, miranda rights and basically he overruled the miranda rights and Miranda rights was secured by the Constitution. Joe Biden and his attorney general overruled that. And that's basically a problem. I'm saying that if <clears throat> the Miranda rights are overruled, that means you can't hold these police, police accountable. And he said his whole big thing was he's going to do police reform. But he hasn't done that. And it seems like he's going, he's uh, backtracking. He's giving more budgeting to the police. And giving them more funding, giving them more spending and everything. While and also dealing with these Miranda rights, that's basically that's a problem. And then there's actually the U.S. Supreme Court basically now with Joe Biden is protecting the police from Miranda lawsuits. That means basically what it means is, you know how those old school, the old TV shows, and how you have the Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. If you don't have an attorney, someone can bring a point to you. Well, if the police don't read Miranda rights and everything else, you can't hold them accountable. And that's why I'm saying that with Joe Biden, he is going, he is basically seems like he's for the police instead of doing police reform. And that's what I'm saying. That's I why I gave him that. I agree with you on that. I think he is for police on that one. I think it's a problem. But I want to correct you on the Supreme Court part. Joe Biden, the Supreme Court, they're not at lock arms. That's a whole different situation. The Supreme Court is a conservative majority. So they're going to vote in favor of that. It doesn't matter who was the president, <coughs> Obama, Trump, or Biden, mm. they were going to do that anyway. Mm. But I just want to say <coughs> that Biden needs to be held accountable for backtracking on what he said about police reform. And now he, all of a sudden he wants to give them more money. Mm-hmm. And I think what needs to happen with that is people need to start going after these police unions and start suing them. Yeah hold them accountable and I think also too people need to hold Joe Biden accountable by telling them okay we're not if we vote for candidates in the um, midterms we only vote candidates that support our interests if it doesn't happen we're not voting yep and I think that's what needs to happen they need to get hit at the polls yep hit the polls they don't seem to understand anything else and I think also, too, is that Joe Biden needs to um, pardon nonviolent um, drug dealers that specifically the ones that sold marijuana that have um, convictions on them. That would help fix it, too. 
And I think what he needs to do, because I heard um, going to another um, part of this to where um, Joe Biden didn't deal with this situation at Buffalo when he went down there. And Al Sharpton told him, this is, he told him two times, he said, don't come down here and just give a speech. He said, come down here with a plan on which, how you're going to fix this, on how you're going to improve things in the black community. And he said this too when he when Joe Biden went out to Atlanta to um give a speech. He said, Don't come out to Atlanta and talk about um voting rights and stuff and you don't have a robust plan to address the situation within the communities. So I, the piggyback off of what you say is he's doing is uh, it's like he's doing more tokenism than actually governing for the black people. Yeah, Again. And that's where the problem is going. At. And I, I'm going to say this: he's done certain things for blacks, but I feel like it's not enough. And I don't feel like he's being serious with the situation. He's not. To me, I feel like he's not putting a lot of force, putting the force of the presidency to get a lot of this stuff done. Specifically with um the Buffalo situation. After that mass shooting in Buffalo, um, people in that community, they lost their supermarket because it got destroyed in that shooting. And it didn't open up. And the New York governor had to send funding down to get get it open. And I'm like, you're the president. Why don't you send funding down to um, New York to get that addressed? And that's where really my problem is at with him is that anyway, anytime he does something, it's like you're all it's like you're always trying to give black people the short end of the stick. Because even yet he spent money to HBCUs, but I feel like Congress, specifically the Congressional Black Caucus, why would y'all even vote for that bill that does that? The bill that he sent, it gave millions of dollars to HBCUs, but it's like why are you going to stop at millions? Why don't you put billions in it like the white universities get to give them a better chance to withstand certain things and to give more kids the opportunity to go to college and not have to pay student debt. And that's another thing I want to get on. He had student debt. He's been trying to run away from that issue. He, one of his main promises when he was running for president with student debt, he said he's going to cancel out student debt. And then when he got in office, he said, no, I made this cancel um, $20,000 in student debt. Then he said 10000 Then he said, no, I, he may not be able to do it. And it's like, if you knew you, you couldn't do it when you ran, why would you even go say it? I think that's mis, um, leading voters. Politicians need to be held accountable for doing it. Yeah, I agree with you on that. If you run on something that you know you can't do it, don't go and say it. Or if you run on something that you say you're going to do it, you better try with all your might to get it done. And fight to get it done, not just sit there and say, well, we're working on something or we can't do that. And that's a problem. I'm saying the Biden administration. And I want to say with the police reform things is that a lot of the things that he's getting passed is because, well, passed through executive order and stuff, they're getting done because people were putting pressure on them. And that's a problem. It's like you have to start doing your job better. People should not tell you that. You knew what you campaigned on. Like I say, he campaigned on the George Floyd Justice and Police and that. He campaigned on um, student debt. He campaigned on um, voting rights. And he campaigned on protecting abortion rights. And he campaigned on um, fixing the mass incarceration system. So if you can't do the, the few things you campaigned on while you're in office. Yeah, I agree with you in that sentiment because... This is a problem and everything with these politicians. At the end of the day, they're just doing that this stuff to get votes. 
They, they don't care about the people they're concerned with and they're doing a political agenda. These politicians are being financed by major corporations and everything and they're told to do a certain agenda and if they don't do it, they're not going to get funding. So that's basically part of the problem. And also part of the problem is they're running on stuff and they think they're, they're just going to do it to get votes and they don't really actually care about the people. So we, the people, have to make them care. We have to hold them accountable and ask questions specifically like this about police reform, about the act, not just symbolism and tokenism with um, Katanji Brown Jackson and and all this stuff with the Supreme Court and um, with the Juneteenth, actual tangible policies for black folks instead of just tangibles and it, instead of just basically like, oh, symbolism and rhetoric. No, you said oh, even with student debt, you said you're going to campaign on student debt. You're gonna, uh, you said you're going to get rid of student debt. You haven't done that. He run away from these specific issues. And this is a problem. Cause you can't just we can't just allow these politicians to come up and run up on us and be like, oh uh, vote for me and I'll do this, this, and this. And then we don't do it. Well, I couldn't get anything done. But when it comes to these other groups, you you know what to do. You know how to get things done. All of a sudden your tune change. You're like, oh I, I can get stuff done then. But when it comes to black folks and black issues, oh uh, uh, we, we, well, we can't do nothing. Well, the Republicans are blocking me. Well, it's this. I'm like, what are you, spineless? Get your behind up and, and start fighting for issues that you campaigned on. You're supposed to fight for your constituents. You're supposed to fight for your people that you that put you in office. Let's not forget, it was black folks that put him in office. He said he would have our back. And now it's time for him to show that, and he can't do it. He just gives nothing but symbolism. And that's a problem. We have to hold these politicians accountable. Go to, go, go to their meetings. And not just with these um, general politicians like Joe Biden. I'm talking about local politicians, your local elections. Who are your city council members? Who are the council members in your district? And go to those meetings and hold them accountable. They said they're going to do something and they don't do it. Then you go back into those meetings and say, hey, why haven't you done this? We want this, this, and this done. Come up with a plan. And if those things don't get done, then, well, we're not voting for you. Is politicians politics works like this? It's a uh, quid pro quo. If the politician says who has to uh, sell you something, say, "Hey, if you if you vote for me, I'm going to do this, this, and this." And if they don't do it, then guess what? Don't vote for them the next time because they said they were going to do something and they haven't done anything, and that's a problem. We have to hold these politicians accountable. Hit them at the polls, like you just said. I agree with that sentiment. And hold fuel to the fire. That's a, that's the thing I'm going to say about that. And if anybody wants to look at the case of the uh, Supreme Court limiting the Miranda rights ruling, it's gonna it's called Vega versus Teo. That's what the that's what the police case is called, the Supreme Court case. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that case? Because I wasn't aware of that case. Okay, so yeah, I have the I have the live article from CNN. This is posted back in June, uh, 23rd of this year, and it says Supreme Court limits ability to enforce Miranda rights. So the Supreme Court limited the ability to enforce Miranda rights in a ruling on Thursday that said that suspects who are not warned about their rights to remain silent cannot sue a police officer for damages under federal civil rights law, even if the evidence was ultimately used against them in their criminal trial. The court ruling was cut back on an individual's protection against self-incrimination by burying the potential to obtain damages. It also means that the failure to administer the warning would not expose a law enforcement officer to potential damages in a civil lawsuit. It will not impact, however, the exclusion of such evidence at a criminal trial. The court clarified that while Miranda warning protects a, protects a constitutional right, the warning itself is not a right that would trigger the ability to bring a civil lawsuit. And it, they, they say, they claim that today's ruling doesn't get rid of Miranda right, but it doesn't make it harder to enforce. Under the ruling, only remedy of violent Miranda right is to suppress statements obtained from a suspect who is not properly advised of his right to remain silent. But if the case never goes to trial, or the government never seeks to use this statement, or a statement is admitted notwithstanding the Miranda violation, there is no remedy at all for the government's misconduct. So this all started when the case involved Ter uh, Terrence Terrell, a hospital worker, who was accused of sexually assaulting and immobilized female patient at a local hospital in 2014. 
and about this is about basically about Miranda rights and basically they didn't even read to him Miranda rights. The issue was not whether the defendant must read his Miranda rights, whether he can sue an officer for damages if he doesn't receive Miranda warning for evidence induced in a criminal proceeding. Carlos Vega, a, a Los Angeles County Sheriff deputy, questioned Teo, although he failed to read him his rights as required by the 1966 President of Miranda vs. Arizona, where the court had defendant must be warned of right to remain silent. Under that proceeding, without Miranda warning, the criminal trial courts are generally barred from admitting self-incrimination statements made while the defendant was in custody. Teo ultimately confessed to the crime, was trialed and acquitted even after the induction of confession at trial. Later, he sued the officer under federal law which allows for damages against the government official for violating constitutional rights. The police disagreed and everything, and so there, there goes the ruling. So basically, what happened in this case is Terrence Taylor was accused of a crime and everything, and he was arrested, and he wasn't read his Miranda rights. Taylor responds to this by suing the police officer and everything else. The court ruled that, oh, you can't do that. And I'm like, this is... And the Miranda rights protect you against self-incriminating incriminating evidence. Let's say you get arrested for something and the cop doesn't read you the Miranda rights and everything else. And you get acquitted. You try to sue them. Oh, the Supreme Court ruled, oh, you can't sue them for that. Basically, that means that anything, you know, they have to tell you, the police have to tell you, anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. The Supreme Court is like, oh, no, um, you can't sue the police because of that. And I'm like, that's what he's saying. You're violating Miranda rights because these police officers don't have to read Miranda rights to you and they can basically get away with it. That's basically what this ruling is, all, is about. This, was, this happened in June earlier this year. That's messed up that they can do that because I've, like I said, I've always thought that too. They're supposed to read you your Miranda, your Miranda, excuse me, your Miranda rights before you... Um, get arrested or they can't arrest you because it's not lawful. Yeah. And what you're saying now is that it's not. They can do it without. They can arrest you without them really reading. Yeah. And they basically, yeah, they basically can't, they can't uh, limit the ability to enforce Miranda rights. Oh, they say, oh, you still have it, but you can't enforce it. Basically. The police are basically, oh, we don't even have to hold them accountable if they violate your rights. That's crazy. And, that, and that's what's messed up. And this is yeah, the Supreme crazy. Court. That's why I was saying with whole Joe Biden and everything, and this is the Supreme Court doing this. Because you have to hold these politicians accountable and you have to basically like hold these hold these politicians accountable as well. Because this is crazy it's about this we're talking about police brutality and police reform, and it seems that Joe Biden is basically giving more money to the police and yeah. giving them more budgeting and stuff. And now with the Supreme Court ruling, he's allowing this to fester where you can't even you can't even sue the officer if they violate your Miranda rights which is crazy so my final thoughts on this whole Joe I Biden I have statement to make on that too is that I'm glad you said that because what you were saying about the, the sheriffs allowed it too is that it's why it's important to vote for sheriff and mayor in your local elections because, because your sheriffs, they dictate policy and dictate procedures that go on in the sheriff's department. And they control basically anything that goes on in your county that, that you live in. And your mayor, they pick your police chief. So your police chief determines what goes on, what policies work in their police department. So those two things, they collide on your local le level in the elections. So be mindful of who you vote for for sheriff and who you vote for as mayor. Yep, and also and for your city council. Yep, and also and your city, city Yep, your city council, your sheriff, and your mayor. Those are the two things you got to watch out for because if you don't know who these guys are, then they can basically, if they have, and also they might have a white supremacist mindset if yeah. you're not careful. That's why it's very important to watch out for not just the general elections, but the state and local elections. And whenever they have meetings on policy, be there at those meetings because that determines your daily lives. Yeah. Say, for example, you live in Florida. Watch out for, uh, for, that, for certain politicians and everything. You have whatever district you have. You have to look at these politicians and hold them accountable and everything. And if they have meetings on policy, be there at those meetings because they're supposed yeah. to be, quote unquote, representing you 
this is how you hold these politicians accountable and everything. And uh, this is that's how you hold politicians accountable, and that's how you hold them to the standard that they set themselves. Remember, they are the representative of the people, the common man, the everyday worker, the nine to five worker, the everyday person struggling and maintaining a job. They're representing you. These are your representatives, and you have to hold them accountable. And they work for you. You don't work for them. Exactly. Your tax dollars paid for their salary and their security and all that. And also, too, that be mindful of who you vote for as governor and attorney general because they, they can shape the policies of your state. And be mindful of who you vote for in your, I think, state assembly and your state senate because they dictate what goes on in the state. And that's all I got to say on this subject. Yeah. So on this subject, closing out with the whole Joe Biden and Democratic Party and black people need to do hold these politicians accountable. Again, it's very important. Go to these state and local elections, vote for these politicians, know who they are, know what they're all about. Go to their meetings and everything else. Hold them accountable. If they don't, if they say they're going to do something and they don't do it, hold them accountable. We have to control the narrative. We have to control our political power. Black people have a great voting block and great power. But if we misuse it or we don't use it at all, that's a problem. We have to hold these politicians accountable by going to these meetings and knowing who our city councils are and our district attorneys and our mayors and our city council members. Know who they are. Go to their meetings because their meetings affect your everyday lives. That's all I have to say on this subject. And speaking of controlling the narrative, let's talk about this other topic of the Black News Channel being sold to Byron Allen. What do you think about that, Tyler, and about us controlling the narrative? Well, first, I want to touch up on um, Byron Allen and the new Black News Channel. Um, initially, when I heard that he was buying a Black News Channel, I got excited. But then I saw after he purchased the channel, I saw what he did. He turned, he basically turned the Black News Channel into the Rio which is a website that Byron Allen owns and it tells black stories and it has like different black people working on the um, website, writing columns and op-eds on the site. But what I saw on the channel is the Griot's channel is not the same as the website. The Griot's channel is basically reruns of Byron Allen produced shows on a network. And he said he what he's planning on doing is put certain news updates on it soon and he's going to not only include black stories, it's going to be centered around LGBTQ, um, white people, indigenous, I don't know if he said indigenous, but I know he said um, the Latino community and I'm like, that's cool and all, but why are you if the channel was called Black News, bought it, but you're not center it on Black News the way it was and just make improvements on it. What Byron Allen actually said it was that Black News is the reason why the channel was doomed from day one. And I, I disagree with him. I think what happened with Black News channel is there wasn't enough funding for it, there wasn't enough marketing put into it, and there wasn't enough people subscribing to the channel to buy subscriptions on their network to keep it going. But what I want to talk about too with that is that Byron Allen, after he bought the channel, I saw what he did with it and I did research on him. It basically, he says is that Byron Allen is not, his goal in buying all these channels is not really to help black people. It's really to benefit himself and to keep, make him a more powerful player in this media game around people when I've heard that he screwed other people over with uh, his other channels that he owns he cancelled different shows because I've seen a few shows on uh, deals that he had with Fox where they were Byron on Byron Allen on content and he cancelled the shows these shows that were being canceled, they have good ratings. And I'm like, why is he doing that? 
But what I found out is that he he's really a scumbag. Mm. Really doesn't give a damn about what black people want. It's just really he wants to serve his own purpose. What he's trying to do is cater to the more white conservative black people. Yeah. And he gets white supremacists. So in other words, he's a traitor. Yeah. And there's another uh, term I can, I can call him, but I'm not going to call him that. And uh, Screw it. I'm, I'm going to call him that. He's a coon. I'm just going to come out and say it. He's a coon. Because if you say uh, uh, you're going to help black people out and everything and we need to control the narrative, then you turn around and say, well, uh, to quote him, he said, there's no need for a black news channel, but rather a good news channel. It'll be more focused on lifestyle, entertainment, news, and sports and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but every every time we have something that's specifically black owned or black controlled, you wanna we wanna include everybody. LGBTQ, this, indigenous, Latinos, and I'm like, that's cool and all, but it was called the Black News Channel. It focused on black stories. Why do you have to be inclusive to everybody and everything else? We need to have something that we can control. Our narrative. You know. Roland Martin. He has his own network. And. He controls the narrative. On that show. We need more shows like that. Where we control the narrative. And we're not. Being sold out. By people like Byron Allen. Who just says. Oh we don't need a black news channel. Yes we do. Because we need to control the narrative. The media already gives us a narrative that we're criminals and thugs and stuff with the black man or the black one and the black woman is basically, you know, a ratchet woman and stuff. And she's nothing but an angry black woman. So we already have that narrative within the within the media. That's what we need. Black news channel, because it was for black stories and it catered towards black people and it catered towards a large audience because we need to control the narrative. Same thing with what Roland Martin does. When he controls his, he controls his show. Like we have to control the narrative, control how we say things, control the way how we report the news. But instead, it seems that the whole every time we have something specifically for us, it wants to be all inclusive, and that's a problem. Because if we don't control the narrative, how can we objectively? I'm gonna say this: if we don't control the narrative, how can we? Fight back against the narrative that's pushed back against us in the media. Like how the media portrays us as th as thugs and criminals and everything else. Or panders to one or panders to one side of us reading the black woman. It doesn't pander to the black man. It seems like they don't care about the black man and everything else in terms of the narrative on the media. So that's why we have the black news channel where we can control the narrative. We can control the way how we report things. We can control our stories for our people. And how we, we want them to be told. And so that's why it was very important to have the Black News Channel. But it seems like Byron Allen wants to be all, in, all inclusive. And so for him, I'm just like, why are you doing this? For money? You'll have more money if you have a black audience. But it seems he doesn't want to do that. Uh, it seems to me he wants to do whatever his corporate paymasters tell him to do. And that's a problem. That's all I have to say on this subject. What are your thoughts on that? And that's where I have a problem with him on because if you look at Fox News, do you know why Fox News is made? It was made because angry white conservatives and specifically white supremacists, they were mad about not getting their story told anymore in mainstream media. So they used it as a protest to uh, mainstream media. And Rupert Murdoch found it um, in... Um, Roger Ailes, they found it Fox News. And Fox News is the most watched news channel in the America, I know. Maybe the world. But I know America is the number one watched news channel. And the reason why is because they're being cons they're being authentic to who they are. And they're not caring what other people think. They made it specifically for white, middle-aged, or older males. And that's who's watching it. And then it pulled over different groups to watch it. Think about CNN. CNN is one of those 
they trying to be all inclusive in certain ways, but it's catered to traditional media. And CNN's ratings is tanking now because they don't have an actual base now. Specifically, the same way Byron Allen is trying to do it. But think about it, MSNBC is thriving behind Fox News because it's geared towards liberals. And they have a base. In the Black News Channel, it was developing a base, but it needed more funding and it needed more um, marketing. Because I did research on it when the Black News Channel shut down that week. It was the week of Katanji Brown Jackson's uh, nomination to the Supreme Court. And they had their highest rated um, week in the channel's um, history. Then it shut down at Friday. And that's where I say is if you saw it doing that after two years, that means it was about to die. And I watched the Black News Channel. It told different stories about black people in a positive light. And it had different people come on. It didn't just have white people come on it. No, it didn't just have black people come on. It had whites, all that. They all wanted to be a part of it. And that's what I always talk about with a business or anything. If you build it the right way, everybody will come. So I don't understand why he's saying he wants it to be more inclusive. Yes, you do. But it's, if you build it on a foundation of authenticity, it will, the people will come and watch it. You'll get blacks, you'll get whites, you'll get um, Asians, LGBT, all that. Because look at BET before it became uh, what it is today. We start, BET was specifically a black channel, but then you had other people come watch it until Robert Johnson sold it to Viacom and he sold us out. Now Viacom controls most of the um, cable news channels you see on TV. Cable channel. Yep. And that's really what um, I think Byron Allen is trying to turn by turn um, Black well, now the Grio into a, he's trying to turn it into a Viacom version of BET instead of the real world version of BET. He's trying to water it down, and it's like, you can't do that. Yeah. Because it's not going to work. Because if Viacom wanted to build BET, why didn't they do it long ago? Before Bob Johnson did it. Because they don't have the creativity. And that's what I'm saying about what's going on. I heard you say, um, we need more black shows. Yeah, we got a lot of black shows. We need more black news networks. We need more black TV networks. We need more black corporations, black-owned corporations. Yeah, that's why I was saying with uh, Roland that's Martin. That's what I was saying with Roland Martin. He has a show that basically that he no, controls. He has, he, he, he has a, I'm saying he has a network. He has internet network. Yeah, he has an internet network that he, he controls the narrative, and he controls it all. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what we need. Not just we with black more. shows. But we need networks and everything. That's what I was saying. Yeah. We need more. We got networks on TV now. We got remote TV. But that's not enough. We need more remotes. Yep. And I think that's what goes on, too. It's a stigma in the black community. People get mad and say, oh, why is everybody doing the same thing? There's nothing wrong with that. You got Nike. You got Adidas. You got Reebok. You got Pumbaa. And then you got your Hill figures. You have your um, H&M's. You have... Um, What's another um, sign I had it in my mind? Oh, God. It'll come to me later, but the point I'm making is that black people can have multiple things, too. Like, you see these white corporations and white businesses because think about Amazon. Amazon took a lot of ideas from Walmart. And it became an internet version of Walmart. Why can't we have that on TV for black people? People always get mad with black people and tell them to stick to one thing. But white people, they go into industries that they know nothing about. And they go and take over these industries 
because they have the funds to do it. And that's what I'm saying. We have to urge um, black people with money to invest in more of these companies so we can thrive to control the narrative and not to just control it, but to maintain it. And that's really what's going to lift the community out of poverty. It's because people are going to see a different perspective. It's going to change minds. It's going to change the mentality. And it's going to change the identity of certain things. Because those that thought that they uh, they couldn't do this and that, they see it on TV. They say, hey, look, when I grow up, I want to do that. When I grow up, I want to have my own network. When I grow up, I want to be the CEO of this network. When I grow up, I want to be a journalist like this person. When I grow up, I want to be a weather man, a weather woman as this person. When I grow up, I want to be on radio. And that's what we need more of. Yeah. Not just more of it. We need more of it that we control, we own. Yeah. That we benefit from. Because that's, this was, that's what's going to lift us out of poverty community as a whole. Yep. And so, and go ahead. That's where it's going to make the politicians and stuff take us serious because if we band together and start putting money into the campaigns and telling them, no, you will do this, you will do that, or we'll have you taken out of office, that's going to change things. But we have to stick together to do it. And we have to hold people like Byron Allen accountable too. When they do stuff and they pull fast walls over people, we got to make sure that we got to let them make sure that we we're not going to stand for this. And he needs to do better. I definitely agree with you on that. We need to hold these positive, hold these people accountable, hold Byron Allen accountable for all the nonsense that he does, and we need to. Control our own narrative, have networks and everything that we control and that we can hold. That's how you hold these politicians accountable, as you just stated, where you control your own narrative, control your own network. And so you build the capital, you finance these politicians, homegrown politicians within our community. And if they don't do what we tell them to do, then basically, hey, we're not funding you. We're not funding your campaign. Good luck. Because we have to let these politicians know that we're serious. Because I realized something. Most of these politicians don't care unless it involves money. You hit them where it hurts with their money in their pockets and you finance them with their campaigns, you control them and you control their narrative that they, they want to push. So yeah. we have to control that narrative. If we don't control yeah. that narrative, then guess what? Through the money and aspect, if we don't control that narrative, then guess what? They're not going to do what we say and they won't take us seriously. We have to hold them accountable by controlling our own narratives and funding our own politicians and home grooming them. Through our own party. Yeah, I agree with you on that part. Yeah, so closing out this episode, final thoughts on the politicians holding them accountable and Byron Allen, what are your final thoughts? My final thoughts are basically what I've been saying the whole show is that the way we hold these politicians accountable is to call them out, to attack their money, attack their position. And to basically don't sleep on them, don't be quiet. Don't allow them to get over, go get away anymore. When you hear people saying, well, give this politician time, tell them no, we gave them enough time. It's time for them to act. It's time for them to do their job. <laughs> and to remember that our tax dollars pay for their salaries. And the thing with Byron Allen, too, he's a news network. He bought a news network, even though he turned in, into something. When you hold that, that comes with a great responsibility, too, because news organizations, their job is to hold people accountable. You watch ESPN. They, their job is to hold athletes accountable. If you watch CNN, MSNBC, or Fox News, their job is to hold politicians accountable. If you watch... Um,
to another one I want to say. You watch um, Revolt. Revolt's job is to put out the best music and to make sure artists are making their best content. And radio stations, their job is to call out artists on the BS. When people feel that they're doing things that don't represent the values and um, when an artist is not making something that's authentic to themselves. So I think, yeah, those are my closing thoughts is to really just hold, the way you hold people accountable is to hold them accountable. Yep. I agree with you on that. Hold them accountable. Know who these, again, I can't stress this enough. Know who these DAs, these mayors, these city council members, the council members in your local district. Know who these people are. Go to their meetings. This is how you hold them accountable. You also hold them accountable through funding and controlling the narrative, controlling the networks, specifically news networks and campaigns and their businesses and everything else. That way, when they basically run as a politician and stuff, and they don't do what you tell them to do, you can pull the plug and be like, hey, if you don't do what we're telling you to do, um, we're not funding you. you. Use that as a bargaining chip. And that's my closing thoughts on this topic. And make sure you turn in the Black Evolution podcast each week. We're going to have new episodes each week. And the uh, next t- episode is going to be Dita saying R&B is dead, the Robin Allen's police shooting, and we're going to talk about black gun ownership. So tune in to the Black Evolution every week. We're going to hold people accountable. We're going to tell like we really is. We're going to go hard on this. This is the Black Evolution, and I'm your host, Dabbing Daniel. And we signing off. Listen to this outro.